Yes. She's not back yet. Oh, I hope nothing bad happened to Master Chevin. Hey, that little kid is crying. Wonder what happened. Let's go check what's wrong. <laughs> Master Chevin, she... Other volcanic crystals, but she's still not back yet. <laughs> I told the guards, but they said they don't have people to spare. Plus, that area is super dangerous with tons of monsters and bad guys. <laughs> they, they have to finish making preparations before they can try to rescue her. But it'll be too late by then. So, you'll help? Great! I'll just make a quick sketch to show you where the guards went earlier. Master Chevin might have stopped around here. She might have been forced to go near the Umbral Needle. If that's the case, then... Please, you have to save her! Save Master Chevin. According to the map, we get away from me. Look over there. Is that Master Chevin? Propagate. Where did you come from? So, so strong. Let's get out of here, boys. Run. Leave the stuff if you want to live! Drop all of it! Well, they didn't put up much of a fight. <sighs> Thank you so much. I thought I wasn't going to make it down this mountain alive. Saved by the Traveler. Guess my luck's not too bad today. Uh -huh. Sorry, let me introduce myself. I'm Chevin, a gem artisan. I'm not usually this lucky, but... Maybe things are looking up. She did, huh? I didn't mean to make her worry. I wasn't planning to be gone longer than... Two days. Tops. But then, I discovered a new seam of volcanic crystal near the Umbral Needle. It's a large deposit and the purity is exceptional. I dug up a whole bunch of it and was getting ready to head back. But the phlogiston within the crystals attracted monsters. I panicked, and ran up a narrow path to avoid them. But by the time I was in the clear, I ended up running into those bandits. You showed up in the nick of time. If the situation was so dangerous, why didn't you just drop the crystals and run? I left most of them behind, believe me. I only kept the purest chunk. I have to bring it back no matter what. For Tlasoli and poor little Nechka. Ah, right, you wouldn't know. Slasoli is a former ancient name artisan, and Nechka is her daughter. Oh, you know Shilonen? <laughs> Try mentioning that name in front of Tlasoli. She could sing Shilonen's praises forever. The foremost expert in ancient names, the future of our tribe, the finest artisan in that land. You'll never hear the end of it. I know Tlasoli misses the days when she used to forge ancient names. She'd never say as much, but I can tell. Because of her daughter. Poor Nechka contracted an awful illness, and Tlasoli put everything aside to take care of her. Even as Nechka's illness grew worse, Tlasoli never gave up. Like a torch in the night, she was determined to burn bright even as darkness encroached from all directions. Still, all's well that ends well. Thanks to the doctor's medicine and the great spirit's protection, Nechka's flame was rekindled. 
Her condition has been slowly improving ever since. She's still weak, of course, and has to recuperate at home. But she's well enough to write letters already. She often writes to Shilonen, apparently. Her dream is to become an ancient names forger just like her mother. Her birthday's in a few days, so... Tlasoli asked me to find a pure volcanic crystal to give her as a present. Yeah, talk about an important chunk of ore! What a nice gift! Paimon hopes it helps her feel better. I'm sure she and her mother appreciate your well wishes. Alright, let's head back. I'm sure Imish is worried sick. Actually, why don't you come with me to visit Tlasoli tomorrow? It's all thanks to you that I managed to bring back the crystal. You deserve a reward for helping us protect something so significant. Hey, the Pyro Archon said she contacted Shilonen about that already. Let's not complicate things. We don't need anything fancy like that. A normal gift is more than enough. <laughs> don't worry. Something tells me you'll like this one. But I'll let Plasoli tell you what it is herself. Oh, you're early. Looking forward to your gift? That's right. Nechka's been so sick, and Tlasoli had to give up what she loves. Things might get better, but they could probably still use some cheering up. <laughs> I've already asked someone to swing by and let Tlasoli know we're coming. She's probably made all the necessary preparations. Let's go then. Do you mind watching the story, Mish? I'll be right back. Here we are. Nice house, right? Give me a sec, I'll go knock. Flasoli, open up! They're here! Flasoli? Are you home? Open the door! That's strange. Huh, the door's locked. But she shouldn't be out at this time of day. Hey, Nechka! Nechka! It's me, Chevin! Open up, please! What if something happened to the two of them? What if Nechka got worse again? Let's not overthink things. They were doing just fine the last time I was here. Nechka was sleeping soundly in her room. Still, I told Tlasoli we were coming. Maybe she had to take Nechka out to get some medicine. Hey, what's that over there? Looks like a Tepetlasaur nest. That's right. Tlasoli has a Tepetli sore companion. If I remember right, its name is... Iengu? When she was still in the forging business, she'd often have Iengu help with some digging work. But since Nechka fell ill, she hasn't let it dig much recently. Wait a minute. What the... This place is a mess! Iengu's nowhere to be seen either. Oh, look at all these broken boxes! Something terrible must have happened! Oh, all right. I'll just find a place to hide for now. How is it that every single time Imish tells me not to go someplace dangerous, I end up running into danger? It's like her words have some sort of power over me. Maybe it's the Wyab's doing. How is it that every... Tracks end at this cliff. Could the Tepetlasaur have climbed up the mountain? Let's head up there and see. Tlasoli's companion, though. Uh, Paimon still doesn't see any sign of Tlasoli. Hey, Traveler! Paimon! That's Chevin's voice! Come down, quick! Tlasoli's here! Huh? We just got up here, 
Tarantula Soli's back already? What a coincidence. Well, guess this means we should head back down. Uh... Why is the Tapetlosaur coming along? Whoa, hey, hey, don't run, you'll hit us! Yangu, come here. Are you being naughty again? <sighs> oh, that's a good Saurian. Oh, you must be hungry. Sorry. I'll whip up something for you later. Alright, run along and play now. I'll come along in a sec. <sighs> oh, sorry, you two. I was waiting for you at home when Nechka... Well, she snuck out and ran off by herself. She said she just wanted to pick some flowers for our guests. But... She ended up getting lost along the way. Luckily, I managed to find her before long. Yeah, Kevin told us she was just starting to get better. She's still very weak. The shock and the cold wind certainly didn't help, so she ended up with a slight fever. I gave her some medicine and now she's in bed. But it's nothing a good night's rest can't fix. That said, she won't be able to meet you today. I'm sorry you came all this way for nothing. Don't worry about it. We know she's still recovering. Chevin told us how serious her illness was. Her health definitely comes first. We were just dropping by to check on her. Yes, and to run away from eating her vegetables. She's a fast one, that's for sure. She jumps over chairs, hides under the table, then runs all around the house. I can hardly catch her. Seeing how she is now, that's already enough. I really couldn't ask for more. Hey, cheer up! This is supposed to be a happy occasion! We do appreciate that she tried to welcome us with flowers. Anyway, Tlasoli, about the thing I was telling you before. Yeah, what did you get us? Well, it's a blaze gem inscription. I made it from the purest ore, so it's almost completely resistant to erosion. The techniques used to make it are all rooted in ancient name forging. <laughs> Don't say that or the wild might smite me. The process just uses a few of the same techniques and materials. When I first made one, I didn't think it could serve any practical purpose, apart from the erosion resistance and the general aesthetic. But then Chevin suggested using the crystals to make a special kind of ornament. Blaze gem inscriptions made by an ancient name artisan. Engraved with words that never fade. Quite the sales pitch, don't you think? Wow, that description really does make it seem special! <laughs> Tlasoli's blaze gem inscriptions really are special, though. Word of mouth isn't always reliable. As information gets passed along, it becomes incomplete, forgotten, and sometimes even distorted. But the words inscribed on these crystals will stand the test of time. The inscription will never deteriorate, and the meaning will never get twisted. It's the perfect gift for a dear friend or significant other. You could even pass it down to younger generations. Paimon's interested! Let's buy one, Traveler! We can engrave our name! Then, once we find your sister, we can get her to add her name as well! That way, our names will be together forever! <laughs> you deserve it! You saved me! And Nechka's birthday present! It's the least I can do to repay you. Chevin, I thought I told you. Don't you start acting shy too, Tlasoli. It's a great gift! I know how much work goes into one of your Blaze Gem inscriptions. Well then... Thank you both. I'll have it ready as soon as possible. Then, I'll have you do the inscription yourself. Nechka should be well by then. She'll be very excited to meet you. Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We don't even know how expensive that would be. You sure we have enough travel funds? Hold on, this isn't part of some scheme to make us spend all of our mora, right? Chevin? You never know. You do look like you have some savings to spare. No, don't listen to that, Traveler. You'll end up losing all your mora. 
<laughs> In any case, it's up to you. Also, if you don't mind, Tlesoli, I'd like you to help me repair my Blaze Gem inscription. I dropped it when I was attacked earlier. The rope and clasp both snapped, so I haven't been wearing it. I tried fixing it myself, but I just couldn't get it to stay. Could you help? Just leave it to me. I'll make it as good as new. Thank you, Chevin, for going all that way and... It was nothing. We all just want Nechka to get better. You're right. Yangu, behave yourself. I'll feed you in just a second. I'll have Chevin contact you once everything's ready, Traveler. Maybe we'll even line it up with Nechka's birthday. We can even have a little party. Oh, that sounds great! We'll look forward to all the good food, and we'll make sure we're ready to eat. Anyway, see you around, Tlesoli! Look after yourselves. Nechka is going to be so happy to meet you. Since Nechka's birthday is around the corner, let's go to the tribe and buy some things, and then pay the family a visit! Shilonin, good thing you're here. I'm wondering if I can... Oh, uh, the shelf on the left, second row down, first X on the right. That one's yours, and the garden hoe belongs to Iknal, and the hammer is Pakal, so make sure you take the one that's yours. I haven't even said why I'm here. But looks like you're about to head out for a break. <laughs> yes, but I am going to take it right here. The temperature is just perfect today. Really? But doesn't it feel a lot hotter than usual? I really don't want to stay out in this heat. <laughs> exactly. In hot weather like this, customers don't tend to stick around and talk when they're coming to place orders or pick up the goods. I see. Oh, here comes another customer. I'll just leave you to it then, and pick up my ex. Sure, sounds good to me. Hey, Shiloni! Oh, Traveler, Paimon! We meet again. Oh, you two seem to be in good spirits. How's your, uh, Pilgrim's Chronicle been? Run into any issues? Oh, good. It was also my first time receiving a Pilgrim's Chronicle, even though I've already turned it over to you. There are still a lot of things that could go wrong, so I wasn't sure if there'd be any issues. Huh? So, uh, what are the chances that something might still go wrong? Well, less than the chances of Mualani accidentally falling off a spirit way, I'd say. Oh, well, that definitely would never happen. I found the actual Lonin. Thanks a lot. By the way, Nitchka's birthday's coming up real soon. Are you planning to visit her? I prepared a gift and was just getting ready to take it to her. Uh, you're not planning on giving the kid a full set of pliers again, are you? Or, let me guess, woodworking tools? Oh, uh, yeah, I make these myself and it's a lot of work. But if you like a set, I can make some time and forge one for you. Great! We often camp out in the wild, but a set of Shilonin's tools would make pitching a tent and starting a bonfire a whole lot easier! Well, still, I won't be giving Nichka any tools this year. She wrote me a letter saying that she'd like a copy of To Kill the Brave. The book is not what you call a bestseller, but luckily, I have a few copies in my collection. They were really old editions that were published a long time ago. But they should still be readable. <laughs> Children her age love fairy tales. The last time I was at Tasoli's, I even brought Nechka. Huh. Wait. What did I bring her again? It must have been her favorite thing, but... Uh, why can't I remember it anymore? 
Oh, it is quite hot today. Seems you're about to pass out from the heat. Do you even remember your own name? My memory can't be this bad. It's just these last few days. <sighs> I've been forgetting things for some odd reason. Well, in that case, why don't you use the Blaze Gem inscription you have as a memo to engrave some important things to remember? After all, that inscription will never wear out, and it's easy to carry. I'd say that's quite a fitting use for it. <clears throat> you do have a point, but my inscription is almost already full. No, no. I engraved some wishes on my Blaze Gem inscription. You know, just some dreams that I have for the future and things I'd like to accomplish one day. Even though Tasoli has said that from an aesthetic point of view, it would be best for people to keep their inscriptions short, this Blaze Gem inscription was still made by a name engraver, the forger of ancient names themselves. Everyone thinks that the inscription she made might have some wondrous powers. So, many people who bought Blaze Gem inscriptions engraved their wishes and dreams on them in hopes that they would come true. Sounds kinda like a wish granter. But if you do that, won't everyone be able to see your wishes and dreams? <laughs> Don't worry. We usually ask Tasoli to add the inscriptions for us. She has a unique method of engraving. With her method, the light must be at a certain angle in order to see the text. Without the right angle of lighting, the Blaze Gem inscription will just look like a pretty stone. That's true. In the end, a Blaze Gem inscription is essentially just a piece of rock. It doesn't have the power to grant people's wishes. Making wishes to it is like uh, shouting into an echoing valley. The only one who will answer is yourself. But using it as a journal for your wishes is also fine. Carrying them with you and taking a look from time to time can be a good source of encouragement. Well, as long as you don't suddenly change your mind and want to take your wishes back, that is. These things are extremely durable. It would take a lot of effort to change the words. And I don't think anyone would willingly part with it either. They're not cheap and very hard to get. If you ever lost it, you'd just be filled with regret. Still, it's, huh, it's really strange. Given Auntie's skill, how could it take so long for her to make one? Huh. Oh, well, I hope someone didn't give her an idea of making fewer and selling for more. <laughs> it's true. Chevin would totally have put that in her ear. Still, I don't think it's such a bad thing for Tasoli to make some money by selling these. At least she and little Nechka are better off now, and won't have to worry about the cost of treating her illness anymore. I was really worried about their family at first, and was even planning to send them some... Send some... Huh? What was I planning to send to Nichka again? Ugh, this memory of mine. All right, if you stay out in the heat for any longer, I'm afraid even the inscription won't be able to save your memory. You should, uh, go back. Yeah, get some rest. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> Please give my regards to Tlesoli and Nichka. Go talk to Aaron Lee to get some medicine. So you'll be going to Nechka's birthday party too, Shiloni? Oh, perfect! Then let's go together! Oh, yeah, sure, but I didn't expect you to know Tlesoli too. She hasn't been coming to the tribe much lately, so how did you get a chance to talk with her? Oh, so that's how you met her. She even wants to use volcanic crystal as a forging material. Eh, guess she's uh, really pulling out all the stops for her daughter. Then let's just go and ask. Come on, I want to give her the book anyway. Huh? Wait a second, our birthday gift's supposed to be a surprise? If we ask Nechka, then she'll know what gift we'll be giving her. And that would ruin the surprise! But if you don't ask her, then how will you know what kind of present she would like? Here's another idea. Perhaps you can also give her a storybook based on what she wrote in her letter. That might be a good option. But shouldn't we give it a little more thought? If we all give her books, it might seem like we didn't put much effort into it. Shilonen, 
Have you really never asked her what she would like the most? There must be something else she'd like besides books! Unfortunately, no. Nechka's illness has kept flaring up over the past few years. Apparently, she couldn't do anything during that time other than rest in bed. She didn't even have the strength to talk to anyone. It wasn't until recently that she started to recover from her illness and regain strength to write letters to others. Anyway, there's no need to overthink it. Worst case scenario, I can split the book into two volumes and we can each give her one. No, that's terrible! That would really look like we didn't try! Let's just go ask Nechka. Even though it would ruin the surprise, we could at least get her something that would make her happy. Anyway, could you tell us a bit more about the book that you're getting her? Is it really that unpopular? Well, it's a little difficult to explain. Y you see, there are actually two versions of To Kill the Brave. The premise of the book is pretty straightforward. It's basically about a set of twin brothers working to defeat a demon lord. But after defeating the demon lord, the older brother, To Kill, discovers that the king's spirit has possessed his younger brother, Remok. In the ending of the original story, the older brother kills his younger brother to defeat the demon lord before jumping into a volcano. I remember there was one line that was super popular at the time. If I still remember right, after being possessed by the goddess Kuatlikwe, Remok said, I do not wish to see your blood be reduced to ash, but I have seen the light of your heart and spirit. Remember my name, brother. As long as you remember me, I will never have left. The other version was released only recently, the author heard a suggestion from someone and suddenly decided to try and make a stake in the fairy tale market, so the story was revised. In the revised version, the brothers killed the demon lord together and both survived. According to the author, this gave the story a happy ever after kind of ending. However, the revised version was not well received. After a month on the market, it had hardly sold any copies and the books were collecting dust on the store shelves. The store owners desperately tried to get rid of the book, and have resorted to all sorts of promotions and discounts to sell it. Even now, the only edition of To Kill the Brave you can find in the market is the newer one, whereas the older edition is nearly impossible to find. Anyway, I couldn't bring myself to give such a poorly rated book to Nechka, so I spent a few days looking and managed to find a few copies of the old edition in a warehouse. I picked out a copy that looked relatively new, and wrapped it up as a present for Nechka. If you're interested, I can give you this extra copy to read. The pages are pretty old, though, so please be gentle with it. Oh, and uh, here's a copy of the newer edition, too. They gave me a free copy when I went to buy some Shokuadal. So that's how they're trying to sell off the book. Could it really be that bad? Even Paimon's curious now. Okay, but you'll have to carry Paimon for a while. Once Paimon's done reading it herself, she'll read it out for you. Let's get going. Celesoli lives pretty far from the tribe, so it'll take us some time to get there. Go on now, Iyengu. Nechka is still resting. Hey, Celesoli, we're here! Oh, what a surprise. And even Shilonin is here too. Oh, it's been a while since I've seen you, Auntie. I received Nechka's letter. She wanted a copy of To Kill the Brave, right? Well, I've brought the book for her. There are several editions of the book in Natlan, and I wasn't sure which version she'd prefer. I asked a messenger from the Science of the Canopy. It seems this softcover edition is one of the most popular options, so I brought it for Nechka. You haven't changed a bit, Shilonin. Let's go inside. I was just boiling some shokuadal, so you can all try some. Shilonin used to love drinking shokuadal. When she was little, she would always have several cups every time she came to visit me. You were already a big girl by the time I finally had my Nechka. All right, for now let's... Oh, oh uh, Auntie, let's go inside. Traveler, please help me get her into the house. Be good, Yangu, and don't get in the way. All right, let's uh, get indoors. Watch your step, Auntie. So 
sorry. Nechka's illness has been flaring up recently, so I was up for a few nights. I suddenly started to feel dizzy in the sun. I hope I didn't scare you. Have a seat. I'll fetch you a few cups of chocolate. Please wait a moment. Oh, I've already brought them over. This cup's for you, Auntie. And these are for you, too. Chocolate? What does it taste like? Paimon's heard that it can be pretty bitter. Traveler, could you give it a try first? Oh, don't worry. Auntie always adds a lot of sugar. It won't be bitter. The last time you came to visit, you were still just a kid. But now you're a pillar of the Children of Echoes. No, of all Natlan, even. Oh, well, it's all thanks to the drinks I had here and the books I happened to read. We heard that you two are from the same tribe, but Paimon had no idea you were so close. When I was little, my parents were always talking about how skilled Auntie was at forging ancient names and how she was a good role model for the rest of us. The moment I became idle at home, they would toss me into Auntie's workshop to watch and learn. Then I would have your parents go back, boil you a pot of chocolate, and let you play in the house. Yeah, and then I would drink and listen to you banging away with your tools in the workshop. But eventually, she moved out of the tribe to find some more space, and I didn't have the chance to visit again after that. But why did you seem so familiar with the place when you went to the kitchen for the drinks just now? Because the layout of this place is identical to her old house. Let me see, uh-huh, yeah. That should be Nichka's bedroom, then. That's right. <laughs> I remember you used to hunker down in the room to read and draw. But you're all grown up now. Even if you wanted to live here, I'm afraid you've already outgrown Nichka's bed. That's how Nichka sees Shalonin, too. Whenever she's feeling better, she always asks me when her pen pal sister will be coming to visit. Well, yeah, I'm here now, and even brought a gift as an apology. I'll leave the book here. You said Nechka asked you for the book? I hope it wasn't too much trouble to get. Really, I'm surprised that she even asked you for a present. When she's at home, she'd even ask me for permission to eat some snacks. <sighs> Maybe I've been too strict with her. She's obviously starting to like her big sister more than her own mother. Oh, really? Well, I'd say I really haven't done enough to deserve the title of big sister. Yeah, I, uh, wasn't able to help her when she was sick, and I didn't even come and visit her that many times. Well, the only thing I have been able to do is to help her find some books. Don't be too hard on yourself, Shilonin. You have great responsibilities as the name engraver of the tribe. We both know you were far too busy to take care of her. The responsibilities on your shoulders also became far heavier when I... gave up on my work. You just had more important things to tend to, Auntie. No one in the tribe blames you. We all know that Nechka needs her mother's care. But that doesn't change the fact that I gave up on my work. And even now, I still have not found the courage to pick up my hammer again. I'm sorry to leave you to shoulder all the responsibilities alone, Shilonin. <sighs> oh. Oh, why so somber all of a sudden? Uh, don't be so sad, everyone. Hasn't Nechka gotten better lately? Oh, pff, relax, auntie. I can handle the work, but once Nechka is back on her feet, you should get back to work and let me have a vacation. You'll be the one who's busy then, and I'll be sitting at the side drinking chocolate and cheering you on. <laughs> if that day really comes, you can have as much chocolate as you like. <laughs> if you asked me before, I wouldn't have even been able to talk about it, but now that she is gradually recovering, I've also gained some courage to face what happened back then. Nechka's illness actually originates from the Abyss. That night, I was in the tribe, having a discussion over the forging of new ancient names. Before we could finish our discussion, the alarm started to ring outside. A horde of monsters from the Abyss suddenly attacked the tribe, so everyone banded together to fight them off. I joined the fray as well, and it wasn't until the monsters were repelled that I got back home with some guards from the tribe. But Nechka was gone. I can't remember how long I spent searching for her. Maybe for two or three days. In the end, 
We found Nechka at the bottom of a short cliff. She was holding a dried up embercore flower in her hand, and there were traces of abyssal corruption around her wounds. I know. It was all my fault. Before the incident, Nechka had asked if I could forge an ancient name for her. Work was busy at the time, so I told her that if she could find an embercore flower, I would use it as material to forge her an ancient name. Oh, Nechka, my daughter. My Nechka. I was holding her in my arms, but no matter how many times I called her name, she wouldn't open her eyes and look at me. I was the one who decided to move my workshop to the outskirts of our tribe for work, and I was the one who left her home alone. Oh, my daughter, my Nechka, why do you have to suffer like this? <laughs> Whoa, hey, hey, it's okay, right? Nechka's getting better. She already has the strength to write letters now, doesn't she? We... Uh, well, Shilonen has even brought her a gift! Sorry. I just can't control myself whenever I remember that time. Phew. Alright. It's not every day that we get guests. I really shouldn't be crying like this. I asked someone to buy some ingredients for me. So, why don't you stay for dinner tonight? I'll make some shrimp bisque, grilled fish and mint sauce, and tower tacos. A lot to make, and we don't want you to tire yourself out. <laughs> Thank you both, but don't worry. It's just a few dishes. I'll be fine. You three just need to make sure everything gets eaten up. I can't eat a lot at this age. Oh, we haven't had anything to eat yet, so don't worry. We'll make sure there are no leftovers. Ah, oh, it just occurred to me that Shalonen likes to eat cheesy crab hot pot. Why don't I make that instead of the grilled fish and mint sauce? I remember you don't like picking out fish bones. Nah, eh, both are fine with me. I've learned to just chew up the fish bones now. Oh, come on now. If you don't want to pick out the bones, I can just take them out for you. Anyway, for dessert, would you like a cup of grain fruit or chocolate? Cup of grain fruit! How about a cup of grain fruit mixed with chocolate? Okay, got it. I'll go start cooking, but could you do me a favor in the meantime? I ordered a bunch of ingredients, and they should be here any minute now. Would you go check by the door and see if they were already here? If so, please bring them in. Come on, Shilonen. Stop lying around. You shouldn't nap before dinner. It'll ruin your appetite. Hey, hey, I'm not a kid anymore, you know. You don't have to worry about my appetite. That's beside the point. If you don't watch out for your health while you're still young, then when you get older, you'll... All right, all right, I'm getting up. We'll go check on the ingredients with Shilonen. It isn't far, so it shouldn't take us long. <sighs> that kid. That kid. She's just like Nechka. flying down on a Yunkasaur as soon as we came out! A messenger from the Scions of the Canopy wouldn't be flying here. They usually come climbing down the cliffs nearby. No need to look. There isn't anyone on the cliffs. I... I just saw a ghost! <laughs> hey! You there! Sorry, but does Tlesoli live around here? Oh! Are you the one who's supposed to deliver the ingredients? Ingredients? Are you kidding? I was nearly eaten myself! <sighs> Never mind that now. Those monsters are still hot on my heels. Please, you've got to help me! Shilonen, we... Uh... Where'd she go? Whoa, she's already gone up to fight the monsters? Uh, let's go help her out! Huh! <laughs> 
All right, that should be it for the monsters. Yeah, was easier than I thought. Oh, it also seems we're in good luck. The goods weren't damaged either. Strange, we didn't see any monsters on the way here. Yeah, right. I use this road to deliver goods all the time, and I've never been attacked like this before. It's the main road in and out of the tribe, so people often come here to clear out any monsters. This area is usually very safe. I don't know what happened, but it seems like all the monsters around here have gone berserk. Even the docile Tepetlosaurs are in a frenzy. Tlazoli doesn't even forge ancient names anymore, so why can't she just move back to the tribe? If she comes back, Nechko will even be able to find some playmates. She's so young and hasn't even... Um... Uh... Nechka's playmates. No, wait, I, I feel like my kids have played with her before. They've even told me about Nechka's favorite game. If I remember right, it was... Strange. I always remembered it before. <sighs> How could I forget all of a sudden? Look at that! He has a Blaze Gem inscription too! You should go back to the tribe. It seems like you had quite the scare today. We'll take the ingredients back for you. I'll carry these bags, and you two can carry the rest. Huh? Oh, sure! Uh, Pyra can take care of these grapefruit that fell out of the bag! If you say so. Thank you so much. I guess today's just a really bad day for me to go outside. Hmm... That's so weird. Why is everyone we run into today having trouble remembering stuff? Paimon's not sure how to say it, but she's got a strange feeling about this. Like it's all somehow related. Once you live long enough, you'll eventually start experiencing strange days like this. Let's bring the ingredients back. Otherwise, we won't have anything to eat tonight. Ah, you're finally back. What took you so long? I was starting to worry. Oh yeah, we uh, ran into some small problems, but everything's fine now. Alright, as long as everything's okay now. You all have a seat. I'll get the food ready. It won't take long. Tasty food! You're amazing, Tlasoli! They were all pretty simple dishes to make. Don't be shy. Dig in, everyone. But Paimon can't reach that dish! Could you give Paimon some? Come on, come on! Ooh, yeah. Can I get another serving, please? Y you're done already? Do you even chew when you're eating? Of course! Didn't I say that I chew up the fish bones? I'll have just one more fish and leave the rest for Nechka. It's okay. Just go ahead and eat all you'd like. Nechka can't eat these dishes anyway. Her body is too weak to digest these kinds of things. I'll just make some broth for her. Oh no. But Paimon thought she'd already recovered from her illness. Injuries caused by the Abyss cannot be undone. The doctor said the fact that she's stable is already quite a miracle. But it's okay. Nechka can talk to me now and can even hold my hand. That's more than I could ask for. Even if she will never again know that I am her mother. Wh what do you mean? The doctor said the Abyss has had an irreversible effect on Nechka's soul. She... she's lost all her memories from before she was injured. The doctor also said this sort of memory loss isn't like simply forgetting something. Rather, she can no longer remember anything from before that fateful day. Huh? But how does that happen? You know about the woven scrolls that the masters of the Nightwind use to record things, right? Well, generally speaking, Forgetting things is like when the woven scrolls would gradually start to fade. As long as you repaint and weave the threads again, the faded memories will come back to life. But the case of Nechka's memory loss is as if her woven scroll had been cut in two, and the portion of the past was burnt to ashes. 
The books she loved to read, the flowers she took joy to grow, and the time she spent in this house were all cut off by the abyss and can never be retrieved again. As one example of that, Nechka now only sees me as a strange, unfamiliar auntie who claims to be her mother. She's a good kid, and doesn't want to upset this lady who's been taking care of her so much, so she still calls me mom. But I've always had a feeling that she's constantly wondering about things like, where is her real mother? Why is she stuck here in this house? Was she abandoned? Nechka really has no idea that her real mother is right in front of her, and has never left. So you plan on recreating Nechka's woven scroll all by yourself? What do you mean? Or should I say, you've already started reweaving that scroll long ago. The delivery guys. I saw it hanging from his waist, so I asked to borrow it from him. <sighs> Don't worry, I'll return the inscription to him once we've figured everything out. These things aren't cheap, after all. When did you know? Yeah, I, I noticed it back when Blaze Gem inscriptions suddenly became popular among the tribe. It was then that I also noticed that everyone wearing Blaze Gem inscriptions had varying degrees of memory loss. Traveler, you've picked up on it too, haven't you? Accessories made using ancient names forging techniques. <laughs> For what's only supposed to be a pretty souvenir, this inscription contains a phlogiston engraving with a truly overkill level of complexity. The shapes and patterns of these engravings are also identical to that of an ancient name. By making just a few slight adjustments to the layout and connections of the main pattern, you can pretty much qualify this blaze gem inscription as a bona fide ancient name. And yet, you've never told anyone about these engravings in the Blaze Gem inscriptions that can be activated at any time. <sighs> Am I right, Auntie? I knew you were a sharp one, Shilonin. That's right. I have a way to cure Nechka and restore all her memories. It's actually quite simple. I want to forge an ancient name for Nechka that contains all of her past memories. And the reason they must be approved by the Wyab is because the memories they bear are all stored within the ley lines. Extracting those memories from the ley lines requires the Wyab's assistance. But your plan wouldn't need you to do any of that, right, Auntie? Your Blaze Gem inscriptions will help you complete that part of your plan in the ley lines place. You will use the inscriptions to form a massive memory bank for Nechka. And the ancient names you're trying to forge will be used to extract corresponding memories from the memory bank. A memory bank? Wait, so the reason all those people were having trouble remembering stuff is because... the Blaze Gem inscriptions took away any memories related to Nechka? Using other people's memories of Nechka to reconstruct her past? Ah, this is the first time I've heard of such an idea. You've seen through my plans, Shilonin. You're as outstanding as ever. Far more brilliant than me. I intend to use this method to collate all the memories related to Nechka and allow her to regain her past again. But wouldn't extracting memories like that hurt the person carrying the Blaze Gem inscription? Not at all. Every time a Blaze Gem inscription extracts memories, the process is under my precise control. That way, there's no chance of anyone in the tribe getting hurt. This is the central inscription that controls all the other Blaze Gem inscriptions, which will also soon serve as Nechka's ancient name. You made all of this yourself, Plasoli? Yes. It was lots and lots of work. It was truly exhausting. Or perhaps I've just grown old. You saw it yourself. I nearly fainted just from being in the sun. I could collapse tomorrow or even in the next few moments. But Nechka's ancient name is still far from completion. I've solved the issue of storing memories, but I still don't know how to connect Nechka up to this central inscription. I've thought you just modify your own ancient name. I considered it, but this matter doesn't have anything to do with my ancient name. 
It's of no help to me, and I don't need its help now. You know the price to pay for making something like this. Yes, I do. But as long as I can get my Nechka back, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Otherwise, Nechka won't have any chance of reclaiming her past once I'm dead and gone. She won't remember me, and she won't even remember why her name is Nechka. When that time comes, she will be left to drift around the world all alone, unknowing of where she came from, or where she should go. She is my daughter, the one to whom I gave the Nechka name. Whether it be as her mother, or as a name engraver, I can't simply stand by and let her name disappear. Shilonin! <sighs> I'll take the central inscription with me. I'm going to completely disassemble it to confirm its components and uses, and... I won't make any promises until I've checked everything. Say goodnight to Nechka for me, Auntie. Oh, wait. I've also finished inscriptions for the Traveler in Paimon. Let me fetch them for you. I'm sorry it took me so long to finish them. <laughs> Hold on, Auntie. The Traveler and Paimon have never met Nechka before, so you can't draw any memories from them. That wasn't my intention. They're just ordinary gifts. Please, take them. Huh? What was that noise? Nechka must have woken up and wants to get out of bed on her own. Sorry, I'll go check on her first. Nechka! Don't try to get out of bed! Just tell Mom if you need anything. You go ahead and take care of Nechka, Auntie. Let's go, Traveler and Paimon. There are a few things I want to tell you. You two can wait outside for a moment. I just need to go in and grab something. The workshop is a little messy, so unfortunately, I won't be able to show you around. Oh, yeah, that's not really what I mean. It's not the mess that's really the problem. It's just that the workshop is cluttered with way too much stuff. Books, files, and even ancient texts I got from the Masters of the Nightwind. Everything's piled up to the ceiling. You probably won't know where to step once you're inside. Kachina suffered quite an unfortunate series of events the last time she went inside. Well, I suppose it was my fault for being so focused on searching for information at the time that I forgot to lock the door. After entering the workshop, she was shocked to find herself face to face with a massive woven scroll from the Masters of the Nightwind. And then she turned around and knocked over a huge stack of forging blueprints. She tried to step out of the way, but tripped on a poster tube that was behind her, and then boom! The forging blueprints came crashing down right onto her head. Oh no! She's lucky I noticed in time. I found Kachina in a daze and managed to save her before an entire set of the history of the Children of Echoes was about to bury her. I then dragged her up to the second floor. Ever since then, Kachina always waits outside the door and doesn't dare take a step in whenever she comes to see me. Yeah, you're an artisan and craftswoman after all. We thought there would be weapons and armor hanging all over the place. But it seems more like a library than a workshop. Well, my primary work is forging ancient names, which is much trickier than making swords and tools. Aside from the necessary craftsmanship, I also need to consult many ancient texts. You probably already know that each ancient name represents a certain spirit, behind which are countless related stories to support it. In other words, the essence of an ancient name is the physical manifestation of a certain spiritual will. And as a name engraver, when I'm working on a new ancient name, I'm not only trying to give it a physical shape, but more importantly, I'm also trying to understand the spirit contained within the name. And to do that, I have to collect as many related stories as possible, 
and read through them all. But, as you might know, people tend to add a lot of uh, extraneous details when it comes to stories about themselves. For stories that have been clearly exaggerated or altered, I must gather other related stories and information as cross-references. This way, I can filter out all the absurd and exaggerated details and restore the person's life to its true nature. Only in true stories can you find the authentic spirit. And this is the only way for the spirit to become an ancient name that matches its essence. We've heard about the concept behind ancient names before, but after hearing you explain the details, Hyla can't help but think that ancient names are really powerful. Well, no matter how powerful ancient names could be, they would never be able to suddenly turn into a blade or allow you to smash through an entire cliff in one punch. It's just a form of spiritual power that's passed down from generation to generation. It doesn't have those kinds of physically tangible effects. Um, well, take your own names, for example. From the moment you appeared in this world, some person had already prepared a blessing for you. And that person then condensed this blessing into your name and gave it to you as a gift. It may feel like the moment you received your name is already in the past, but it will always stay with you and move with you in the future. Names are blessings for the future from people standing in the past. Well, that's what Auntie once told me. And with this blessing, people will become more confident as they walk into their future. D to put it another way, it's like having a lamp in your hand as you walk through the darkness of night. Oh, Paimon gets that! If you're alone when you're walking in the dark, it's easy to get scared and tired quickly. But if someone else is walking with you, then it won't be nearly as scary. And, well, you might still get tired, but it'll still be a whole lot better than walking alone. The Traveler always has Paimon by his side, though, so he'll never have to worry about that. Oh, Paimon sure many wish they could be in your shoes, Traveler. Paimon's always flying! Of course it gets tiring! But we're getting off topic. We can talk about that later. Anyway, this is what Plasoli told me when I was training as a name engraver. And to be honest, I've only understood 20% of what she said at most. I've never been able to figure out the rest. But doesn't that mean you basically don't get it? Well, that's not entirely true. Auntie and I have at least come to a consensus on the most important thing. Ugh, you know what, I am sick of talking. We can talk about all of this later. Please, uh, wait a moment while I grab my things. It's fine. It was just a bunch of very old ancient name records. I've already made copies of them. I uh, kept this set of phlogiston wedges in the back so it wasn't easy to take out. I had to resort to brute force. Come on, let's go disassemble the central inscription. It shouldn't take long. Here we are. This is the place. This cliff is pretty high. What are we going to do here? Are we going to climb to the very top and then throw this inscription down the cliff? I'm going to use phlogiston to make an engraving circle on the cliff wall. That will allow me to investigate the internals of the central inscription. Huh. Now let me see if this thing can even turn on. I was still an apprentice the last time I used it. Before we attempt to engrave the inside pattern of an ancient name with phlogiston, we always use this to draw out the engraving diagram on a cliff or open ground. Only after we've confirmed that phlogiston can flow properly through the internal engravings can we start formally working on the small internal engravings of the ancient name. If we want to dismantle the central inscription in a non-destructive manner, we'll have to use this thing. I really don't want to engrave such a large diagram with my bare hands. Oh, so you'll be able to see what it looks like on the inside without ruining Tlasoli's inscription? Uh, for the most part. If it were just an ordinary, unfinished ancient name piece, I'd just take it apart and pour phlogiston into the internal engravings to see everything. 
But since it's a central inscription, it would be better not to destroy the blessing that Auntie has prepared for Nechka. So, Shilonen, does this central inscription fall under the 20% you understand about ancient names, or the other 80% you don't understand? Oh, don't worry. As I said, Auntie and I share an understanding of the most important principle, which is names are intrinsically valuable. Only by having names can things be sorted and categorized. They allow the world to become more orderly and identifiable. For example, when I order ore, I would usually say I need volcanic crystals of about 35% purity and no more than 3% of impurities. Without specific names, I would only be able to go to the ore merchant and say, I want this and this. No, this isn't it. That one. No, not that one either. Yeah, you see what I mean? Names are a crucial part of how we standardize our workflow. Without names, whew, the work would be impossible. Yes, because forging ancient names is first and foremost a technical job. There's no debating that. As for the question of why it's important, as long as it does not affect your ability to perform your work, you'll gradually understand it as you put the process into practice. After all, creating an ancient name is quite the complicated process. <sighs> well, let me break it down even further. We're not in the tribe right now anyway. Essentially, by forging ancient names, I'm assigning nicknames to the heroes in Natland's history. Giving someone a name is a subjective expression. You just need to express your hopes and wishes for them. But giving someone a nickname is a much more objective expression. To come up with a fitting and accurate nickname requires much thought and observation. If ancient names or nicknames aren't descriptive enough, no one will remember them anyway. So the best I can do is gather all the information I could and try to come up with the most fitting nicknames possible. Even a minor mistake in the process could cause people to misunderstand the nickname. For a name engraver such as myself, such mistakes would be considered a major blunder. Paimon isn't trying to come up with a nickname for Shilonen. Besides, all of Paimon's nicknames have been very descriptive. Everyone can remember them. Phew. <laughs> now I'm curious. Why don't you, uh, come up with one for me? Uh, are you serious? Of course. This is also my line of work, you know. Go ahead. Um, a nickname? Shilonen. Well, she uses phlogiston to forge weapons and make names for others. Uh... Um... Smith? <laughs> yeah, not bad, not bad. And quite fitting, too. I'll remember it. But, uh, you should keep observing my work, Paimon. Maybe you'll come up with an even better nickname. Right, okay, time to make like a smith and start smithing. Watch closely. Adjust the inclination by two degrees. Stop. The error margin is within an acceptable amount, but I'll extend the inscription link a little more just to be safe. Mm -hmm. I'll leave some space here. When the linked engravings are activated, the inscriptions here will overlap with each other. That should complete the flow. Amazing, Shiloni! You were running all over that cliff as if it was flat ground! Oh no, it doesn't have anything to do with my tribe. It's just the, uh, phlogiston adhesive I have on my shoes. But after all that running around, I'll have to infuse them with more phlogiston again. Huh. I should prepare a spare supply of phlogiston to bring with me next time. More or less, yeah. I usually have at least the key equipment on hand. I can show them to you when we next find the time, but let's get to work first. 
Hmm, let me see. Start with anchor one and activate it with density three phlogiston. didn't find any anomalies in the phlogiston engraving. All the adjustments are indeed based on ancient name engraving techniques. That means we can help Tlasoli and Nechka now, right? Uh, well, probably, but I have good news and bad news. Oh, but I'm also just going to go ahead and share both, so it's not like you'll have a choice in the matter. Paima will cover her ears after the good news. Well, <laughs> even if you cover your ears, the issue will still continue to exist. But, uh, you know, before we get to that, I want to ask the Traveler a question. What are your thoughts on absorbing memories? <sighs> I knew you felt the same way, and that'll save me some initial explanation. I've never been very good at that anyway. It's, uh, hard to control the absorption of memories. And technically speaking, this type of inscription has the power to do far more than absorb memories related to a single person. By herself, Auntie can't handle that level and scope of work, but if she has accomplices, it is completely possible for her to use this inscription to accomplish far bigger things. Accomplices? You make it sound like she's committing a crime! Well, here's the good news. Yes, this Blaze Gem inscription would be the perfect tool to commit crimes, but we haven't found any accomplices or signs that she intends to put it to such uses. From a purely objective standpoint, we can consider that possibility as yet to be confirmed for now. The bad news is, there's still an underlying problem with this Blaze Gem inscription that cannot be ignored. I believe I've mentioned this before. Ancient names operate with the help of the Wyab, granting them the power to read information kept in the ley lines. In this process, the Wyab actually function like uh, relays helping the ancient name-bearer sense the information from within the ley lines. If you remove the Wyab from the process and don't use any tools, then finding a specific story is akin to trying to scoop up a specific grain of sand from a rushing river. Yeah, exactly. Anyone who attempts to do so will likely lose most of their cognitive function or become a babbling madman who talks to themselves all day long. Now, let's consider the memories that Auntie has gathered as the ley line, and, uh, Nechka as the only ancient name-bearer of this ley line. There's no way Auntie would let Nechka plunge into the river of memories without any tools. She'd only be overwhelmed by the surge of memories. And, considering that Nechka has forgotten all of her past, she'll be unable to work on her own to accurately find the correct past. Only Aunt Tlisoli can help her filter the correct memories of her past. So, if my hypothesis is correct, Auntie is actually planning on turning herself into Nechka's Wyab to help her extract the corresponding memories in the different situations she may face. In an ideal world, this would be perfectly fine. As long as every extracted memory is correct, Nechka would essentially be getting her past back. And I also believe that there won't be any mistakes in everything that Auntie remembers about Nechka. But Auntie is not a Wyab. Her body won't be able to handle the load for long. But how can we solve this problem? No matter how we try, Tlasoli will... Names are blessings for the future from people standing in the past. I've also made up my mind. Come on, let's go see Auntie. <laughs> 